Hello and welcome back. In this module, we're going to dive deeper into AngularJS. Now that we've introduced you to some of the basic functionalities, we're going to do some more fun stuff with it. So in this module, we want to go deeper on the binding that is in AngularJS. When you create a module, you can create properties that get or set a value on that model. Additionally, you can create functions that return the results of a model. So let's take a look at how that works. So the first thing you'll see here is I'm back in Visual Studio Code and I'm still in my index.html file. First, let's modify our check number HTML and add some additional markup we're going to need. So again, you can copy and paste this from the exercise file, which I highly recommend. But the area that we're going to replace is if you scroll down in the index.html file, it's these three lines here, the input, the paragraph tag, and the button where we enter and click to check the number and get the results. So let's go ahead. I'm going to copy and paste the example code in. So let me copy and paste. And again, I'm going to indent it so it looks good. Notice that we surrounded this content in another bootstrap row. Since this gives us 12 columns, we'll break the content into four columns and eight columns. Next, we added some labels and input boxes to span and collect some name information. And that's right here. So we have label first name, last name, and full name. And then same thing, we have the inputs right here. Let's go ahead and save. And let's load this in the browser and see what it looks like. So if I refresh this. You'll see this part remains the same, but now we have first name, last name, and then we have full name down here. You should see these new fields on the page. They don't line up like we would want at this point. So let's add a little style in our app.css to clean up the layout. So if I go back to Visual Studio Code, let's open up app.css, and I'm going to go to the very bottom here, and I'm going to copy and paste the following code from our exercise file, label padding and width 100 pixels. So let me save and refresh that. Easy enough. So we just added a little padding. It just looks a little bit better. Adding a user object to our scope. Next, we want to modify the Angular JS controller that we created in the last module to include a new property. So again, let me go to my controller. So we have that file open main controller.js. Previously, the scope properties were a single value field or function like date. This time, the property is going to be a complex object that we will call user. The user object is going to have its own properties for first name, last name, and full name. Notice in the code that we are going to add that each of these are functions that modify local variable values for underscore first and underscore last. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code from the exercise file. So what I'm going to do here, let me just go ahead and copy it and I'm going to paste it after our existing code. And let me fix the indentation here. Two things that need to be pointed out here. First, notice the use of the underscore for the variables first and last. Programmers will often use this convention to help someone reading the code to recognize that these are values that are private to the function. You can't access these two variables by themselves. You have to use the scope.user object to manipulate these values. Second, notice the function for the first name or the last name. We are using a special operator with the question mark. This is similar to an if then else statement. It works like this. If question mark then colon else. So again, what we're saying here is any non-zero value is considered true. So in the case of first name, the function is saying if the arguments dot length, in other words, something was passed into the function, is not zero, assign the value of underscore first to the argument value of first. Otherwise, return the current underscore first variable. 
In the case of the full name function, no modifications to the private variables are made. The values are simply concatenated together and returned as the value of full name. So you'll see here in this case the full name function, we're just returning the first, a space, and the last name together as one item. So now that we have our functions added, let's wire up the model in our HTML. Let's turn back now to the HTML document and connect up the model that we just added to our controller. We're going to use the ng-model attribute to connect each input. So let's go down to our inputs, which are right here, input and input. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste the code from the exercise so that I can explain it better for you. So in this case, let's go ahead and copy and paste that in here. And let's see if I could fix the formatting. So as noted before, we're using the ng model attribute to connect each input. That's this right here. Notice though that we use user.firstName. That dot is telling the code to use the first name value of the user object. We also add the ng model options, which is right here, and set it to getter setter true, which tells AngularJS that we are using functions for getting the value and setting the value. This is because we could use JavaScript somewhere else on the page to update the user object. So let's go ahead and save and load index.html in your browser. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me refresh. Okay. Notice that as you enter values in the first name and last name text box, the span below full name is automatically updated. So I'm going to demonstrate this. So as I type my name, Joseph, and then student, you see in real time as I'm typing, it's triggering those functions and updating the full name. And that full name is being displayed across that span. So I'll just say Bob Smith. Hello world. In real time, you see this happening. This is just a simple example of the binding that you can do. But imagine if you had a shopping cart where you could calculate the new price for the total as soon as the values were entered into the text box. Again, we are relying on the Angular JS framework to do the user interface manipulations for us so that we don't have to write all the code and handle all the updates. In other words, Angular JS makes this much easier for us to do. Finally, let's turn our attention to dynamic page content. Most websites that are popular have content that is refreshed on a regular basis. The content that we have created so far is static to your page. If you wanted to update the content, you would have to edit and republish the page. In this next section, we are going to look at how to make the content on the web page dynamic and pull from a service. You will see that the main content of your page is merely a template and that all of the content will be dynamic from a server. We are going to break this down into steps so that you can see what is happening as we move forward. First, what we need to do is add an additional module to our main Angular app module. The module we are going to add is called ng sanitize. This provides functionality to sanitize or clean HTML code. The first thing we'll do is we'll add a reference to the script in our index.html page. And again, you can copy and paste this right from the exercise file. So I'm gonna copy it and then I'll paste it right after our reference to Angular and before our app.js. So I, I went ahead and I pasted it there. And the next step is we need to tell our main module that we want to load the ng sanitize module as a dependent module within our main app. This is done very easily. We go back to our app.js and simply between these two brackets here, we just put in a two single quotes and then we put ng sanitize and that's it. So basically when this module loads, it also knows to load the ng sanitize module and the functionality that it brings. So now that we've done that, let's move the main content of our page into the scope of the controller. So let's open maincontroller.js and paste the block of code with the articles from the exercise file just above the var 
underscore first. And again, this is a pretty large piece of code, so make sure you copy the entire thing. And once you've pasted it, it should look like this. There you go, and let me uh, indent that a few here. And let me remove some extra space. So now that we've pasted that in, let's remove all three of the article objects from your web page, and we're gonna replace it with the example code in the exercise file. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to index.html. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my three articles, which my articles start here with this row. So I'm gonna put my cursor there. And there's my first article, my second article, my third article. And then this div is what closes all three rows. So I'm going to delete that. And instead, I'm going to replace it with the code from the exercise file. And you'll see it's much less code. Again, it starts with the row, but then we have a couple different tags here which we're gonna go through and explain. This HTML that we just pasted in will use the AngularJS function ng-repeat to walk through each of the objects in the scope.articles variable. It will call each object an article, and then we will use that in the header h2 tags, image and body. Notice we have three unique things we were doing with AngularJS items here. One, when we are placing the text between the tags, we use the value directly inside the two squiggly lines. So in this case, we have the h2 tag here, and inside we have the article.title. When we are setting the value of the source attribute, we have to use the ng-source tag, or the ng-source function to do this. This is because the browser will try to retrieve the image for the value before AngularJS has had a chance to replace it. After AngularJS has resolved the expression, the image will be loaded. And the third thing, we have HTML in the content of our object. Because of this, things get a little messed up. However, if we use the ng-bind-html function, AngularJS knows not to replace all of the HTML goodies in our data and simply render it all as HTML into the div. And this again is where that ng sanitize comes in because it helps to clean up that HTML. So one more thing to note, the ng repeat tag here that we have, again, how this works is we do have our articles object and we're just basically saying repeat every article in articles and then we're accessing this article object throughout so article.title article.image article.body technically we can call this anything we wanted if we wanted to call this story we could call it story and then it would be story.title story.image and story.body but in this case we're going to leave it as article so let's go ahead and save and reload the index page. And if we did everything correctly, we should still see a page full of content being loaded from maincontroller.js. So let's give this a shot. And it worked. So in this case, we have all the files saved and you'll notice we have all the same content being loaded, but now it's pulling it from AngularJS and the code that we wrote earlier. Notice how simple your HTML page got. Imagine now that you wanted to update the layout of your page. Before, if you wanted to change all the titles of your articles from an H2 to an H1 tag, you would, have had to, you would have had to change it on all three articles. What if you wanted to move the image to the right side? What if you had 15 or 20 articles? This could be very time consuming. MVC frameworks let you focus on the view and keep it separate from your data. Moving your content out of your code. Having all of that content in your code isn't a good idea. We did that just to kind of show you how we can access dynamic data using your code. We've now put all that content into a database and exposed it via an API for you to pull that content. Earlier, we learned how to call an API with jQuery and JavaScript. This time, we're going to use AngularJS to do the API calls for us. In order to do this, we need to modify our controller definition to pass in an HTTP core service like we did with scope. Let's modify our main controller and change our first line to the following. So I'm gonna go to the main controller. And again, you can copy and paste this code from the exercise files. So if I paste that in there, you'll see we added the HTTP function and we passed it in along with our scope. Now that you have the HTTP service, we can take advantage of it in our controller to load data. 
Since the API call may take a minute, we don't want the ng repeat in our page to crash because the article is undefined. So let's set our scope.articles to an empty object. Next, we'll call the post method on the choose to code API and get a few articles. When the method is complete, the result will be passed to the then function. We will store the data in the scope.articles value. When this change happens, the ng repeat will rerun and bind all of the articles to the page. So how do we do this? First, let's delete this existing scope.articles because we're not going to use this anymore. And if you go to the exercise file, there is a new piece of code for you to copy. And here it is here. So again, we define the scope.articles and then we're doing a post method. And then as soon as the post comes back, we are telling the scope.articles to use that result data. One more small thing to note, you will see it says your class name. Go ahead and replace this with the name of your class or school. This information will get sent to us so we know who is requesting the articles for their web page. So let me go ahead and save this. And if we did everything correctly and we have an internet connection here, I'm going to go to the page and I'll refresh it. And there it is. So what it happened here again is as the page loaded behind the scenes, Angular went out and hit that API, retrieved the data and then said, okay, we have the data now. And it bound it to the ng repeat or the, the scope that articles and let you view it on the page. So we have one more little challenge for you to help you use all the skills that we've taught you in this course. So we showed you how to get more at angular JS and how to bind data from an API. The content that we're providing you here is coming from another service. Now it's time to show what you know. Modify the code for the HTTP post so that it uses the number entered in the small number box right here. And then make sure that you are only using a valid number when you do this. So for example, if I put a one in here and I hit submit, I should only see one article. If I put a two, I'll see two and so on and so forth and, and keep doing this and see if you could figure out how to do it. So again, see if you are able to modify the code to where it will only show the number of articles that you enter here and hit submit. Thank you again for working through this course with us. We hope that you have enjoyed the material and found it very useful. For future updates and information, please make sure to visit www.choose2code.com. Thank you and have a great day.